Bible Treasures Topic 4 Bible Meditation Welcome to the Sound Doctrine Telecast. Praise God that you are finding the teaching that comes in this particular telecast and I open up in your spiritual life. We want to thank you and we want to praise God for all your testimonies. Pray that thousands who would watch this telecast would escape the floods of false doctrine and be established in the sound doctrine of the Bible. We are presently studying about Bible meditation. And we started our study with the title How Not to Meditate. Lesson number one was do not neglect any portion of the scriptures. Take the whole Bible so that we will have the wholesome food and we will have wholesome growth. And the second lesson was do not rush through your meditation. Take time to receive a message from God and don't just be satisfied with the knowledge and the information that you gather from the Bible. The third lesson was don't be lazy or casual in Bible study. Diligence and hard work are a must if you want biblical studies. And the fourth lesson was do not depend solely on your intellect. Ask God to open up your eyes of understanding that you may behold the wondrous things from his word and God through his holy spirit would help you in that direction. Okay, lesson number 5 was do not ignore the context of the bible text. Who said it to whom was he said why was it said when was it said why was it said try to ask these questions so that you understand the context of each passage. Last week we studied the sixth lesson do not place your experiences above the scriptures we should not use the bible to prove our experiences rather we should test our experiences on the anvil of god's holy word friends please review this lesson as often as possible so that these precious truths would sink into your hearts how not to meditate lesson number 7 do not probe into the secret things once again do not probe into the secret things there is an important principle that you should always remember in bible study there are certain things which are simply mentioned in the bible but they are not sufficiently explained in the bible once again There are certain things which are simply mentioned in the Bible without sufficient and enough of explanation. We should not try to probe into such things. There is a rule that is given to us in book of Deuteronomy 29th chapter. Easy to remember 29 29 of Deuteronomy. The secret things belong to the Lord our God but those things which are revealed they belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law We should not bother about those things which are kept a secret they belong to God We are responsible and we are obliged only to those which is openly revealed to us Therefore beloved stop where the bible stops be silent where the bible becomes silent we must thirst and hunger for the things of god that curiosity will invariably will land us in trouble man's curiosity to move into the forbidden areas we all know how it has landed the entire humanity in trouble this is what happened in the garden of eden god created a beautiful garden with lots and lots of fruit bearing trees 
even if adam had tasted one new fruit for every day i believe even 1000 years would not have been sufficient to finish up tasting and trying all the fruits but man was unnecessarily curious he touched that one that was the barest minimum he touched that one and you know where you and i are today because of that one disobedience let me illustrate this truth by taking an example which is a known example for all the christians turn with me to second corinthians 12th chapter and i want to read to you verse 7 these are the words of apostle paul lest i should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of satan to beat me lest i be exalted above measure all this paul thorn is a subject of research for many many bible scholars but i want to tell you something about this passage what are the things which are revealed to word about paul thorn where was paul thorn it is told that it was in his flesh it was in his body why was the thorn given it was to prevent him from self exaltation and what was the nature of the thorn it was actually a messenger of satan that's all what has been revealed to us in the bible about the thorn in paul's life but we are not told what the thorn was so that is why we need to stop we don't need to probe and try to find out what that thorn was we also should not try to pray and ask god lord please give me that revelation it is please to god that particular aspect should not be opened up before the readers so you stop that be satisfied with the moral of that experience what is the moral of that experience my grace is sufficient for you my strength will be made perfect in your weakness spend time enough time and more time with the meditation of that particular truth and don't try to be probing into what that thorn could have been so if somebody comes up with his bible and say that he prayed for 10 days and god has shown him what paul's thorn was you better shut both your ears and if necessary you quit that hall i can serve you another example about people's curiosity it's about the second coming of the lord jesus christ jesus has only told us how the times would be when he returns He has only told us how things would be. Turn with us to the book of Matthew, twenty-fourth chapter. This happened in the Mount of Olives. Disciples came to him, and they asked him certain questions. The third words. He sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately, asking him, "Tell us when these things shall be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age." they asked when but jesus gave them only how the things would be for example if you look at verses 4 and 5 he said there will be a widespread deception and he says in verse 5 many will come in my name saying i am the christ and they will deceive not just a few people here and there many will be deceived and then when you come to verse 6 and 7 he says that there will be lots of wars and battles and fights and nation will rise against nation and all this confusion and conflict will only be on the rise and when you come to verse 29 in those days the sun will be darkened the moon will not give its light stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken so he was giving a general outline of how or what will be the condition of the time when he would return 
And when you come to verse 36, the day and hour, no one knows. No one knows. Certain translations it says, not even the Son of Man would know. The day and hour, the time, Jesus said, nobody knows. General period, general season, how the climate would be, what will be generally happening, that's only he has outlined. This is exactly Jesus Christ gave us a correction to the disciples just before his ascension. Please turn with us to Acts of the Apostles, first chapter. That was the time Jesus was showing himself alive through many infallible fruits for about 40 days to the disciples. Maybe in another few moments he would be taken up from them. Maybe the disciples sensed it. And they were all having mixed feelings. We'll read the sixth words. When they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? That is a legitimate question of any Israelite. That has been the heart cry of the Hebrew nation for many, many generations. So they asked that question. Jesus said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has set in His own authority. It is not necessary. Do you get that word? Now this is what I am teaching now. It is not necessary. But, Look at the eighth words. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, beginning with Jerusalem, going into all Judea, and then moving into Samaria, to the ends of the earth, you will be my witnesses. In other words, Jesus said, what you as Christians, and what you as his church, must do is goal setting and not date setting. You have goal setting to reach the people. Don't worry about this date setting. It is not necessary for you. I will come when I should come. You mind your business. I will take care of what I am supposed to do. Now that's exactly what also people are these days. You know sometimes they talk about end time revelations of God. The word end time revelation is a biblical word, but what they mean by the end time revelation is not the right interpretation. I will tell you what is end time revelation. Turn with us to the book of Hebrews, first chapter. I will read the first two verses to you. God, who at various times in different ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, in these last days has spoken to us through his Son. Jesus Christ is God's final revelation to man. That is the revelation of revelation. That is the greatest of all revelations. Who do people say that I am? Whom do you say that I am? Immediately Simon Peter said, You are Christ the Son of the living God. That's the greatest of revelations. What did Jesus say? Is on this revelation I am going to build my church and nothing can shake the church. Beloved, Jesus Christ is God's end time message. Then what about the Holy Spirit? Jesus said the Holy Spirit will not speak anything of himself. He will take from what I have said and he will speak unto you. End time revelation means revelation of Jesus Christ. And the another aspect of the end time revelation, non-Jewish people, even the Gentiles, whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall not only be saved, they will become members of the body of Christ. That is the mystery that has been hidden down through the ages, but now revealed through the apostles. Now if you turn with us to the book of Ephesians 3rd chapter, look at the fifth verse. In other ages it was not made known to the sons of man, but now it has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and the prophets. What is that mystery? Look at the next words. 
that the gentile should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel so that is the mystery that has been kept all through the ages without revelation now it is revealed to the holy apostles these are the only two things one is the lord jesus christ but even the non jewish people whoever believes on the lord jesus christ they shall become partakers of the promise of the gospel you should not think that god all these years forgot to tell something to the mankind suddenly he remembered and he started telling no it's not like that delivered we must accept that our knowledge is imperfect which is perfect is yet to come and the new heaven and new earth is going to come that will be the perfect place until that time whatever we have is quite sufficient don't cross the boundaries and try to move into uh, hidden territories whatever you need to know about heaven and hell is already revealed to us in the bible this is gone to heaven and yes return don't go crazy after that fellow we are anyway going to heaven we'll see all that when we go there jesus christ spoke more about hell than about heaven if only we have a vision of hell we will go after every unreached person with the gospel of jesus christ how not to meditate do not probe into the secret things be satisfied with what god has revealed to us obey those words apply them in your life and the purpose for which god has given the bible to you will be more than fulfilled God bless you.